everyone, it's me, Broach. This is another episode of Gobbledygook, where I want to answer one of your questions. Throughout my life on Polish YouTube, I've been asked two questions most frequently. One of them I've already answered, and the second one is, where did you learn to speak English? So I would like to tell you the story right now, so that you know, right? <clears throat> So, I'll start off by saying that my father is a scientist. Uh, he works for PAN, so the Polska Akademia Nauk. And when I was three and a half, he got a, I would say, a, suge a, a proposition to move to Canada, to Montreal, to take part in a project. And the project was supposed to last a year or so, but in the end it turned out to be much longer. So, when I was three and a half, my father and mother and I moved to Canada, to Montreal, where we lived for basically four years. So, I came back to Poland when I was seven and a half. So, I managed to go to kindergarten in the States, I mean, in Canada, in Montreal, and the first class of primary school. And basically, when I came to the... to, I keep saying United States, I don't know why. When I came to Canada, I was three and a half, so I already know, uh, knew how to speak Polish, at least some things. And I started going to an English or American or Canadian, actually, kindergarten. And I was surrounded by people only talking in English. And uh, it was actually a very good kindergarten because it had a variety of different nations. It was a part of McGill. My mother worked in McGill because my mother was actually also a scientist and she got a job there in, in Montreal. She worked for McGill and McGill had this kindergarten department, so to speak, where people <coughs> working for McGill could send their kids. And it was actually a very, very, very prominent kindergarten. And I had friends from all over the world, like Chinese and... Um, I would say Indian as well, lots and lots of people, also Canadians. And this is actually a funny story. Uh, I came simultaneously with another guy, a guy, another boy, and um, the teachers kept sort of records of how we were developing our language skills. And they were very concerned because I've been there, I mean, I was there for, for about six months or even more, and I still didn't speak in English. I was very quiet. I played with the other kids, but I was very quiet. And it was it was difficult to communicate with me because the the other boy, he already started muttering like simple simple words. Like little cat, toy, crayon, whatever. So he 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 had this thing where he said little words. And I still kept being quiet, right? So, so they, the, the teachers were concerned that my English wasn't developing. And they actually told my mother that there may be a problem with me uh, because Arash, the, the other kid, was already developing some skills in English and I wasn't. But then one day, one day, I suddenly started saying whole sentences. So the boy was still saying words, like simple words, and I started using whole sentences. So my process of learning a language was listening, acquiring, and then at some point, poof, I just burst out with whole sentences. I mean, that's what my mother tells me, so I guess maybe, maybe, maybe a bit, it's a bit more colorful, or maybe I don't remember it exactly, I mean, the story, but anyway, that's, that's how my process was. And then I went to primary school, the first class of primary school, where we learned to read, write, etc. And I learned English, and I knew English pretty well by then. <clears throat> when we came back to Poland, the question was whether I would go to second grade or whether I would repeat the first grade. And in the end, my mother decided that I should repeat the first grade because basically I didn't know how to write in Polish and I had problems with reading in Polish. And um, actually, this is also a very funny story. When I first came to primary school, I used to call my teacher per you, because you know, in, in, in America and in Canada, when we're in, in English speaking countries, when you address a person, you usually say you, I mean, could you pass me the salt, which in Polish translate like ty, right? So I kept saying to my Polish teachers in primary school, I kept saying ty, podasz mi, daj mi, and the teachers were like, ah, oh, well, you should not address us like this. And I had 
difficulties <laughs> like switching and understanding that I should not address the teachers in such an informal way. And I don't remember this, but my mother actually told me that there were that there were some problems with me in actually acquiring the Polish language and learning how to write in Polish. That's why I actually repeated the first grade again. And then later on when I skipped to second and third and fourth grade it was it was fine. So I basically got my English intuition, I would say, my English intuition and my English English or American or Canadian accent, I got it from living in Montreal. I don't speak any French, and I'm, I actually regret that, but I had very bad French teachers when I was in Montreal, so I don't remember anything. I studied French in high school, but I just forgot all of it, so it's as if I don't know it, right? So, <clears throat> so I got my intuition uh, from Canada, and I got my accent from Canada, but what I got was basically the basics so I needed to practice and I needed to have more English lessons so my mother enrolled me into like after school sort of conversation classes and I attended like language schools like all of you guys probably do it was an American language school I remember when I lived in Gliwice it was an American language school and then I practiced and when I moved to Krakow I went to British Council it's also a very prestigious language school very prestigious actually it's it's not ironic it really is very prestigious expensive but uh, prestigious and I practiced all my English like learning more grammar more vocabulary there having the basics and having the intuition from my trip to 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 Canada and when I started studying English like at university it was also much easier for me I guess because of the basics because of the intuition I still had to learn a lot of vocabulary really a lot of vocabulary and I'm here today with you guys and my ability because of a few factors. I got the basics when I was little, I got the accent when I was little, but then years and years of hard work of attending American classes, of doing grammar exercises, of learning vocabulary, so it, it didn't come easily, right? It, it, it wasn't simple as that. So what I want to do when I have a child is teach him or her English from the very early stages of life because the age I was in in Canada like three and a half to seven is the best possible age to actually teach someone a language because it comes in naturally it comes in intuitively so that's what happened with me and that's what I intend to do with my kid so I want to speak English as much as possible with my child if I ever have it and and enroll it into private language schools and whatever to give him the chance to intuitive, intuitively learn the English language. And um, of course it is possible to to acquire uh, the knowledge in in in, in um, years, I mean in older years, obviously. It is, it is possible. It probably involves even more work, but what I mean is you don't get to where I am just like that and I had to practice a long time and years and years and years of practice and um, learning and studying and passing exams like FCE, CAE and all that stuff it, it just it wasn't that easy and learning a language is not easy and the, the worst thing about learning a language is that it's constant you have to keep being surrounded by it because if you're not then you forget just as I forgot French German and I'm forgetting Spanish right now because I don't practice it anymore when I move to Russia I probably will have to learn Russian so let's hope that I acquire that Russian and um, yeah so that's that's the story that's that's why I have this English that I have today because of years of practice and living in Montreal when I was a little girl if you have any other questions, like questions concerning English language in general, questions like phonetics, what's the difference between this and that, you can ask uh, You can ask these questions, but I'll probably have separate videos for those. But if you have other questions connected with English language or learning or vocabulary or whatever, write in the comments below and I'll try to make separate videos like answering these questions for you. So <clears throat> that was me. Uh, thank you for being. 
I've hit 1,000 subscri subscribers, so thank you for that. I know most of you came from my other channel, and I'm glad that you did. So thank you for being, and um, stay tuned for a video about phonetics, so the difference between X and Y. I, sh I hope to do it shortly. I hope to do it. I hope I will have time, and I want to do it, so I will. I hope. <laughs> well, anyway, I'm babbling. So that's all that I have time for today. That was the story about my English, and well, see you next time. Bye!